Hello everyone, it's Hexis here with another video. Today we will take a look at the SOS formation that you can send based on the number of troops and the tier of tier types of troops that you have available in your castle and also based on the the scout report that you're having. So let's say the enemy has more mages than archers, how do you send the troops then? Like if, do they have a, an infantry focused front line or are they a cavalry player? And based on that we can also alter our formations or sometimes change a little bit in our technology to get uh, give us some advantage when we are attacking them. And first of all, let's talk about angels. So if you're a lower level castle, the number of angels that you have available and also their technology will be limited. So ideal situation is like if you're a castle below C uh, level 30, tier 9s are the best to use. Also wait until that uh, if you don't have enough angels until then. Or if you're already recruiting angels, then I would say unless you have 30,000 or more angels, try not to use them in your SOS. You can still maximize the effect of your troops by just sending your front line and back line because they have better technology than angels at the time. At least that's my opinion. And then when you're going higher and higher, it's important that you maximize the number of angels that you have available at the time so that uh, they become more helpful in any kind of attack you do, not just in SOS. And then when it comes to the back line so that's pretty straightforward so like if you're a mage player like mage like i am then you send the highest tier mage that you have available or if you're an archer player same thing like highest tier archer that you're sending then the the main discussion or the main main question is what if you are an what if, what if you are an infantry player for the front line or what if you're a cavalry player that's where the formation changes mainly happen so I'm a, I'm a mage infantry player, so for me, I would be sending my infantry as friend line and also the two cavalry tiers uh, just to take hits on their side, like one hit each, they would absorb to give it more time for the friend line to stand. Um, that's how I would set up my SOS formation. We will take a look at exactly how it's done and also see uh, a replay on how that will look like. And if you're a cavalry player, this is a, a decision that people have to make um, when they reach at least castle level 32, whether they want to switch from infantry to cavalry, because having cavalry as a friend line, if you are a castle below 30, is pretty, pretty useless, uh, I would say, because they are really weak. And the, the only thing that actually makes a cavalry strong enough as a friend line is the dodge skill that you unlock in the mystic college um, which basically is giving the cavalry a chance to dodge or like your attack will miss when you attack um, the cavalry and this is like a percentage chance that you would be having and the first the first level for that is available only at the level two mystic college and that is only possible uh, to be unlocked when your castle is C32 or higher. Like the first level is possible only from C32 onwards. So uh, this is very important to keep in mind. Like only thing that makes a cavalry stronger as a friend line is the dodge skill. And maximizing that skill is what makes them so, so crazy as a friend line. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. Don't start with cavalry, in my opinion, before you reach a particular level where they can be useful. So until then, we will have infantry as friend line and mainly focus on how to send them and what tier is useful against what. If you are, okay, so if you are an infantry player, you would be having a scout report. It says, okay, the enemy has more mages and it looks like they are a mage focused player. And so in that case, even if you have um, a higher tier uh, or infantry available. So here, for example, my higher level infantry is T12 now and my next level was is T11, right? So I when I was C34, my highest tier troop was T11 infantry and then the T10. And here, one thing about infantry is that at the, all the even infantry have this special buff 
that's basically a mage resistance so they will reduce damage from mages by 25 percent always damage reduction or damage increase is a, a really good um, skill or buff to have so here when the infantry takes less damage from mages specifically and they are your front line so it's important that when you're attacking a mage focus player sending even infantry in is better in my opinion even if it is a one tier lower than your highest tier available at the time so that's what i would send in my sos formation if i am having t11 as my highest tier and t10 is the second tier however t10 has that added advantage that they reduce damage from mages by 25 percent and this is a pretty nice bonus to have especially when you are also increasing the infantry hp bonuses and infantry defense and everything on top of this and if the if the enemy has archers instead in that case it's it's relevant actually to use um the infantry tier that has more base hp pool like here for example tier 10 infantry has like hp of 1617 compared to the 1936 hit points for a, a tier 11 infantry so they're already the t11 has more hp points and archers have have like this damage increase against infantry they have bonuses against infantry always and like by 30 percent so it's better to send your highest tier infantry so that they have more hp there and more defense obviously as well against archers in that case so they stand strong uh, longer because they are not bringing any other extra bonuses against archers uh, even if like so like tier 10 is only strong against or even infantry is only uh, having that resistance against mages they don't have that against archers so always prefer sending uh, the, your highest tier infantry when you're facing archers at least this is how i set up my sos formation um based on the tier different tier troops and of course when it comes to cavalry as a front line then it's pretty straightforward send your highest tier cavalry and uh, of course have that dodge skill maxed if possible or at least at level three i would say to be somewhat effective in your attacks and then you just do all the technology of um, advances in increasing their hp or defense or damage reduction against a certain type of troops and then when it comes to the technology that you're going to be using this this is actually an extra thing that you could use and for me uh, i have my beast skills all 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 four slots are unlocked for me so i have that fourth slot available to play around with to change my technology bonuses and here as you can see right now my skill there is anti-infantry so it increases damage against infantry and there are also skills available that you can use uh when you're facing cavalry you can add the increased damage against cavalry for example there or maybe they have too much backline compared to their front line and you want to reduce their damage first so that your front line can stand stronger in that case um add something like um reduces the damage from mages or reduces the damage from archers uh, based on what you're facing at the time and if you don't have let's say this beast skill unlocked yet or or like the beast slot the fourth one unlocked yet you could also be trying something like uh using enhancements to reduce damage from mages uh, on your helmet or reduce damage from archers on your helmet and there is also one more thing possible here like on your armor you can have that extra skill as well like reduce damage from archers or mages and i am running a, a setup where i am having a balanced or let's say an equal damage reduction against mages and archers some people prefer uh, to maximize their damage reduction against mages because majority of players are still mage players um as it's i think it's still kind of easier to um get good good artifacts and other uh, skills for mages and archers because a really crazy op um, artifacts and everything for archers are orange artifacts and they take time so for me, I like a balanced setup like this, where I have an equal amount of damage reduction against mages and archers. And if you prefer one or the other, go for it. And you can use that as well in terms of enhancements while you're still working on getting your extra beast skill slot. So that's how 
the basic idea, although at least the way I think about doing an SOS formation uh, works. And now let's take a look at how do we set up, like how many troops that we are sending uh, and everything. So here, uh, this is my SOS formation at the moment that I'm using, where I fill all my angels first and then put one of my tier 11 cavalry and one of my tier 12 cavalry in my formation. And then I send around like 96 to 100, uh, 96,000 to 100,000 uh, tier 12 infantry because that's my highest tier available and also since it is even infantry I don't have to change it it's still in having that extra major assistance so when you have the highest tier as your even infantry this is pretty straightforward you don't have to think extra uh, only when you have an extra tier um, like as an old infantry available as your highest tier then it changes a little bit and of course, when you unlock tier 13s, they are still the strongest infantry. So this changes a little bit. Sending them already is not going to uh, be a problem anymore because you're at that higher level. So it would still be fine if you send them as your friend line, uh, in my opinion. And then why do I send this one of each of uh, cavalry? One reason is that they would be absorbing that extra hit on your friend line. And another thing is that the even cavalry here they have this siege skill so that means like they raises they raise the attack when you're at the attacking side by 20 percent so this is an added bonus when you're sending a cavalry as well along with your other formation and this this formation that i'm talking about right now is for mage infantry players so i feel like around according to my current formation so you need to adjust this for yourself on how many infantry front line you're sending so i'm sending around 96000 to 100000 of my tier 12 infantry and fill all my angels of course and one each of cavalry and then fill the remaining army with my highest tier mages and here it is the t12s so if you are a cavalry player and that that's again the same thing here so we don't so keep in mind you will not be sending infantry here yes they might be absorbing a hit however when you send infantry along with cavalry like that the infantry will be standing in front of your angels and that means one infantry is not going to stand that long and it gets hit and your angels get killed much faster than you want them to be they want to stand as long as possible so definitely not send as a cavalry player uh infantry along in your formation just a cavalry the highest tier possible and send them with enough dodge skill available and then fill out the rest as as it is uh, you won't be sending any of the other infantry types or whatever to absorb extra hits because it's just going to mess up your formation and would actually have an adverse effect on what you try to achieve there so let's take a look at the formation that i'm sending as an SOS, I tried this uh, in Star Ruins to show you how it looks like when it is attacking a full formation uh, enemy. Here the enemy is mage focused anyways and uh, I'm sending my tier 12 infantry and uh, my one cavalry to tribe each. So you can see how they take one hit on that side, delaying the enemy to be reaching my front line, uh, main front line at 30s. And then my angels are standing as long as they can here. So they are not getting hit, only my tier 12 infantry. And also another thing, if you have T11s or like old infantry, basically, um, unless they are the, the, the friend line that you're focusing on, like sending the maximum off, I would recommend to never use them just like a one of each or something like this, because they would always stand in front of your angels. The angels will always be standing behind your old infantry. And this would mean that if they die faster, instead of your original friend line anyways they will the enemy will reach your angels before they even kill down your actual friend line that would, that would mean that uh, you won't have your angels standing as long as you want and become less effective than they should be standing behind your normal friend line so keep that in mind yes they might take extra hit however this would ruin your formation and actually get your angels killed faster than necessary or faster than it's actually possible uh, that's how it looks like for an infantry mage player, how the the SOS, SOS will be. And for cavalry, uh, you just keep in mind, you don't send any, any extra infantry. You just have your main cavalry line and then behind it, the angels, and then 
the majors and of course the beast and that's how the SOS will look like so yeah uh, that's it for today hope you enjoy the video and learn something new um, let me know in the comments below what you think about these formations uh, what kind of formations uh, that uh, uh, you are using is there any difference in the results did you find any other suitable formation for your castle or technology changes that is affecting the way you do an SOS I look forward to your comments and also if you have any questions feel free to ask so until the next video see you later guys bye bye